2007 Buick Lucerne. No heat on the passenger side. Kind of mixed heat and cold air on the driver's side. Well, what I did was I used my scope and I scoped through the interior vent here. I went through that vent there and I'll show you that video. Vent, vent floor, nothing moves. Floor only, defrost and floor, and defrost. Okay, this is the uh, driver's side. I got the panel off under the steering column. It's very difficult to see what's going on up here, but let me go back. I'm going to try to get what's going on here. It appears that all the actuators are working properly. So that's on the driver's side. So everything seems to be working on this side. Okay, this is the uh, passenger side but the center actuators. Appears that all the actuators are working correctly here. Cool. And those uh, actuator doors were working. I pulled out my uh, air filter here, cabin filter under the hood here. This door right here. It was wide open like that. You can see it's wide open. And when I moved all my controls, nothing moved. And that's the closed position. That's the open position. So anyway, got a diagram here of where it's located. That's behind the passenger side glove compartment. And there's a controller in the way, a vent in the way, everything's in the way. And I'll show you how I got at it. Not fun at all. So let's take a look. There's my scope I used. It's basically a bore scope. I had to take tons of stuff apart here. Ah. Had to take the whole dash apart here, the sidekick panel, that panel, glove compartment. And what you're going to see here, this controller here too, this uh, electronic controller, that has to come out. So I took a picture of all these, I pulled that out. And this vent here, I got this hook, I got this strap on it. I had to pull that to the side because it goes up into the dash up to there and I can't get it out without pulling the whole dashboard apart. But anyway, up in there, I don't know if you can even see it, but up in there where that wire is, behind there is where that actuator goes. And yeah, that's the DeWalt extension 90 degree with a bit in it and also had to take this bracket out that holds the controller there um, it's really a pain in the butt to get at um, and this is what it looks like whoops 
don't want to drop that too far down there. So that's what it looks like. Well, I don't know if you can see that. There's a blue sponge in there. And I got the actuator in with one screw. So I fit it up in place, laid across the front seats with one hand. And I was able to look with a mirror to make sure I got it in the track. And then once I had it kind of in place, I put that sponge in there so I can get a screw start. So I have one screw in at this point. So, and I use that to put it in with. So now I'm going to attempt to do the other two screws. And I might even check to see if it works before I go any farther. Don't do this. Don't ever do this. Go buy a new car. Work on a 1955 Buick. Do something. But don't ever do this job. It ain't worth it. Just put on more clothes. It'll be fine. One of the initial problems that I had was my ventilation my recirculation the vent door did not work so basically vent door is closed it's recirculating air in the inside of the car vent door open it's starting to recirculate air from the outside in Here we go again. Um, this is where I'm at. <clears throat> I've already replaced the actuator for the vent door. Now it does close. Before it didn't move at all. No matter what I did, now it's moving. So the next step is that uh, I read on YouTube that you could have a partially plugged heater core. Okay, we're going to do that next. So I've got these hoses disconnected. I sucked out about a <clears throat> gallon of antifreeze so I don't dump it on the floor. I'm going to pull those hoses up over top and I got some uh, heater hose and some connectors and we'll get that old, <clears throat> old antifreeze out of there and we'll put some CLR in there and hopefully we can get some something cleaned out here. I had picked up a couple uh, lengths of hoses here, six foot hoses. One's five eighths at one three quarter and I got a straight adapter a five eighths and I've got a 90 degree because that's all they had and I got them hooked up right here so now I'm going to get myself a clean pail and we're going to blow some water or some air through that first get it cleaned out run some water through it and then we'll put some CLR in there We'll see what happens. Uh, I took my air hose and I blew out through the small hose and had a clean bucket. I was surprised that that much crap came out. These are brand new clean hoses too. I'm going to run some water through uh, it again and then I'm going to go backwards with it. Then I'm going to put the CLR in it and see what happens. Okay, I cleaned out the bucket again, and I blew air through it, got all the water out, and I put a, I guess that's a quart of CLR in there, and as soon as I saw it, the yellow CLR start coming out, I lowered the hose so it wouldn't uh, push it all out, and that's going to sit there for a while, I'm thinking maybe an hour or two, um, it might even... Uh, Go get another one. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll wait and see. 
but we'll see uh, quite a bit came out uh, initially um, we'll see if the CLR does anything I'm pretty skeptical about that this is the actual problem um, I know the air door is working now but it still didn't seem to have uh, equal heat on the passenger side as it did on the driver so at least uh, we'll knock this out and then if it's still not any good we'll see if we can find something else but for right now we're going to sit and wait and let the CLR do its thing well, I don't know if you can see it in this filter I filtered that solution that came out it looks like there's a lot of fines when I went through the filter um, after I filtered it I ran it back through let it sit some more and now I've ran it through with fresh water several times and if you look on the bottom there's still fine debris coming out so I think the CLR has broken up the debris and I'm going to keep pouring hot water through it until it comes out clean and then I'm going to reverse the hoses and back flush it the other way well after flushing it with hot water a few times after using the CLR I decided to put some uh, vinegar through it and let that sit for 45 minutes and look what I got I think the vinegar is actually working better than the CLR so I'm gonna um, I'm actually going to filter that vinegar out with a paint filter and run it through again. Blow it out the opposite way and I'm going to keep doing that until it comes out clean. Obviously this is way plugged more than I expected it to be. And it's kind of strange that uh, the CLR didn't do as well. We'll keep at it. Well, I got the... Uh, hoses put back on. <clears throat> I actually blew out the block and everything. I put some pressure, I put some hose, I hooked some my hoses up to the, the block there and actually pushed some uh, antifreeze back out and checked it and it looked clean. I did take my uh, overflow reservoir off and I scrubbed it inside and out. It had some crud in it too. Put that back on, uh, topped off the antifreeze and I went for a drive and it's actually <laughs> it's hotter on both sides now um, so it seems to be working correctly but I'm not it's getting late I'm gonna maybe do a little more testing tomorrow and actually take some temperatures but I think actually cleaning the heater core did more good than replacing that one uh, actuator which is functioning now but Apparently it wasn't affecting the heat as much as I thought, so we're going to, uh, for right now, that's it for tonight, and hopefully uh, do another test. If it's good, I'm going to put all the panels back on. Sounds like fun. Got the new filter installed. That's kind of a pain in the butt, actually, but I got it in there, so... We're just about ready to button this thing up. In conclusion, the uh, vent door is now functioning from recirculate to be in uh, outside ventilation and so. However, I think that was a minor problem compared to the plugged heater core because I got way more results by cleaning the heater core out than changing that actuator even though it's functioning now um, that's fine but the heater core I think was the main problem we had uh, if I had to do it over again I would have done the heater core first and it might have been adequate and not have to go through all that trouble of tearing it underneath the dash apart. So, in conclusion, I guess, 
if you have a vehicle that's just not heating properly on the uh, drivers or the passenger I guess that would be the first step I would do now that I have some more knowledge about what's going on is to clean that heater core out so um, if that helps anybody that is great and I hope I don't ever have to do it again Thank you.